Brothers and sisters, today I'd like to talk with you about a phenomenon that is sweeping across the world, a situation that is moving so rapidly that people everywhere are wondering what can be done to stop this uninvited, unwelcome, potentially deadly coronavirus known as COVID-19. As of March 12, this highly contagious virus has swept around the world with nearly 128,000 confirmed cases and more than 4,700 confirmed deaths. The COVID-19 virus has spread incredibly fast and governments are taking unprecedented actions in closing borders, quarantining large groups of people and rushing to develop a vaccine against this disease. Financial markets are plummeting, schools have been closed, large conferences canceled, travel moratoriums set, and the list could go on. A general unease is blanketing the globe and panic is starting to set in as people rush to buy hand sanitizer, face masks, and other items they believe will protect them from the coronavirus. As we look around, we wonder what is all of this leading to? Could this be the beginning of the end? How should we as Seventh-day Adventists respond? And what is the church doing in regard to this high-profile global health crisis? First, we do not need to panic. Jesus tells us in John 16, verse 33, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. It's not a surprise that bad things happen in this sin-filled world. Sometimes, however, we are surprised at their magnitude or how rapidly things can happen. And yet, nothing surprises God. While speaking to the disciples about the end times, Jesus told them, For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Coming from Matthew 24, verse 7. Now the word pestilence, by the way, is an older word that means a contagious or infectious epidemic disease that is virulent and devastating. While the world has certainly seen epidemic diseases in the past, this one, this pestilence, seems to have attracted an unusually high amount of global attention and concern. For many, it has become an overwhelming focus. In such situations, God calls us, his people, to offer calm through the storm. We are to be anchors of stability and pillars of hope in these times of crisis as we point people to the strong foundation of Jesus Christ. What are some of the practical ways we can do this? Well, let's outline three important steps. Number one, make sure that you have peace with God. Confess to him any sins you may have hidden in your heart and accept the forgiveness he freely offers to all. Trust that your life is fully in his hands and that he has a wonderful plan for you. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, we read, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And we know for certain that God's future plans for, the, for, for each of us include living forever with him in, in a much better place. The Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He tells us this in, in John chapter 14. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And let me share two additional texts with you, texts of encouragement for your own heart 
and for others. Isaiah 26, verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. What a marvelous promise. If you trust in God, he will give you the strength to pull through. And 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. There are a lot of people around who are nervous. They're, they're almost panicking. But God has not given us that spirit of fear. What kind of spirit has he given? We continue with verse 7 of 2 Timothy chapter 1. But of power, that's heavenly power, and of love, heavenly love, and of a sound mind, a mind that is balanced and is firmly entrenched and founded upon Christ, the foundation, a beautiful soundness of mind. So the first step is to make sure that you have peace with God. The second step is live a healthy lifestyle. Not only does God promise a future better life, but he wants us to enjoy good health here and now. It has been acknowledged by numerous health researchers and professionals that one of the best ways to avoid catching the coronavirus or any virus is by having a healthy immune system built up through healthy lifestyle habits. Now, Seventh-day Adventists are known for living healthfully, following the wonderful health principles outlined in the Bible and in the inspired writings of Ellen G. White. Living healthfully includes good nutrition through a well-balanced plant-based diet with lots of fresh fruit and vegetables, nuts, seeds, and whole grains, and avoiding high fats and sugars which tear down the immune system. Getting regular exercise in the fresh air and sunlight is also a very important aspect of good health and can greatly enhance our immune system. Drinking plenty of water is not only refreshing, but vital to maintain good health. Drinking a minimum of six to eight glasses each day is very important. Staying away from harmful substances like alcohol, tobacco, illicit drugs, and caffeine is also critical in maintaining good health and fighting disease. One more vital element for good health is getting proper rest, consisting of at least seven or more hours of sleep each night. Finally, and most importantly, is trust in God. As we place ourselves fully in his hands, we receive the peace he longs to give, and we can rest fully in his care. And number three, Share what you have with others. While we certainly don't want to be carriers of the COVID-19 virus, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could be agents of hope and healing around the world, be a witness of spiritual stability and practical hope as you help others to be at peace. So during this time of crisis, as people are panicking, wondering what will happen next, what an opportunity you and I have to share God's message with our loved ones, with friends, acquaintances, neighbors, co-workers, classmates, and even strangers that we meet. This is a time of openness as people are searching, longing for answers that only God can provide. I encourage you to practice the health principles in your own life, and then share them with others. This is part of comprehensive health ministry. Show how living a healthy life can greatly enhance our immune systems and help prevent disease. And remember, your mind, where the spiritual activity is taking place, with the frontal lobes of the brain, where God connects with those fine nerve endings is part of the whole body which is the temple of God and how important it is for us to keep it in good health then your mind will also be much sharper 
even more importantly, God calls us to share his truth. The truth about Jesus and his soon return. Offer to study the Bible with those around you. You might be surprised how many people are interested in what the Bible has to say, especially about prophecy and end time settings. There are several good resources where you can find excellent Bible studies. Now, one good place to start, and there are many, is with the It Is Written Bible Study Guides. These are available for free at itiswritten.com slash Bible study. That's itiswritten.com slash Bible study. Another good resource is at bibleinfo.com. That's bibleinfo.com. So again, I encourage you to, number one, make sure that you have peace with God. Number two, live a healthy lifestyle. Number three, share what you have with others. I want to assure you that here at the world headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we are carefully monitoring the COVID-19 situation and are in touch with your various church leaders around the world. Precautions are being taken in our churches, schools, and other institutions to keep us all as healthy and safe as possible. And I encourage you to follow the instructions given by your local leadership. In addition, many are wondering whether or not the 2020 General Conference session will be held as scheduled this summer in Indianapolis, Indiana. At this time, there have been no plans to postpone the session. However, we are monitoring the situation carefully and discussions are taking place regarding various scenarios. We will keep you informed as the situation develops further. In addition, at the present time, we are uh, putting into effect a moratorium or a suspension of travel from the General Conference headquarters for a period of time of about 30 days uh, and will be assessed in the future. But we're trying to comply, as with many others, as to the uh, efforts to try and contain the potential for spreading this particular virus. Know that we are working diligently by God's grace in many things and that your precious world church continues to work diligently for the coming of Jesus. And finally, I want to encourage you to pray earnestly for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Truly, we are living in the end times. And as we see the events around us, we know that Christ's coming will be soon. We need the Holy Spirit's wisdom and power to do the work of God as he has called us to do at this very end time of earth's history. We are told by the pen of inspiration that a large number of precious souls are groping in darkness, yet longing and weeping and praying for life. Now is the time, more than ever, to let our lights shine for God. Let's pray together just now. Our Father in heaven, we ask in a special way that you will guide every church member, every believer around this globe as they face crises, whether they be of the origin of a coronavirus or some other challenging situation. Help each person to recognize that you are our foundation, that you can help us to be anchors of stability and pillars of hope in this chaotic situation where people's hearts are failing them for fear. Lord, help each one of us to be strong sentinels and strong bulwarks of hope for the future. Lord, come into our own lives and fill us with the Holy Spirit. We plead with you for the falling of the latter rain of the Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, bless each one as he and she uh, works and witnesses for you in these times just before Christ's return. 
We thank you for the privilege of being part of your great Advent movement. And we ask all of this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Master Physician, and our coming King, Jesus Christ. Amen.